Hey everyone, this is John Schneider with the Fargo 3D Printing Show. I'm here today with Eric Faldi. Uh, today we're going to be talking about belt-based 3D printers. So the uh, there have been a few that have been announced so far. The two major ones, well the big one that probably most people have seen is the Black Belt 3D printer. Um, so that is one that had a Kickstarter campaign, was re it was reasonably successful. Um, and then there's another one out there called, what's the... the printer Belt. Printer Belt. Like Printer Bot, because it's the right. same company. Right, so the, the Printer Bot one, well, the Printer Belt is by Brook Drum at Printer Bot in, uh, in coordination with someone from... Polar, Polar 3D. 3D. Yeah, so we'll dig into that in a little bit. But first, um, let's dig into the Black Belt 3D printer, a little more detail on that. Yeah, so, so th this is not a hot take. Um, we're still catching up on old stuff. I have a lot of videos to edit. Yeah, um, so th and the podcast is going to be switching up relatively soon. We can talk more about that later, but this is a uh, it's a couple months old news. Yeah. So, yeah. but we figured I wanted to talk about it because I saw some weird things going on as far as two belt printers coming out at relatively the same time. So, that's why we're talking about it. Yeah, so the big thing with the belt-based 3D printer is the uh, the nozzle is basically or the gantry is, is mounted uh, at a 45 degree angle so your gantry is going to be like this and then you've got a continuous belt that comes out of it so the gantry you know you're it's moving in this direction so that's your x and your y and then your z axis is the belt that is continuously moving away from the nozzle now there's some uh, some pretty obvious benefits to this um, one is you have an unlimited z axis so you can build unlimited in one direction i mean material um, yeah. materials notwithstanding. I mean, if you run out of material, of course, that the printing's gonna stop. But the other thing is for automated print production. So this belt, it is generally pretty flat until you get to the end of the belt, and then the part that's underneath the belt, it's down at maybe a five degree angle. And so the belt goes down, and then the parts pop off. Yeah, they'll peel. Exactly, yeah, so it's, it's peel off. It's a typical conveyor belt thing. Yeah. You know? It's just a, something that you can print on a little easier. Right, so the big thing with this is you can start print one object and it'll move along the belt and then it'll start printing another object, belt moves further along, start object number three, number four, number five, and then when it gets to the end of the belt you can have a little basket at the end so it will uh, it will catch the prints. So the prints will pop off, they'll land down in the basket, so you can have a printer running 24-7, kind of working continuously and cranking out either the same part in, uh, in large quantities or have a wider variety of prints and you know have each item be different. So this, is, um, this has been one of the, uh, the big sticking points with 3D printing is you still need to take the prints off the bed when you're done printing. There's still that post-processing that needs to go on. You're still gonna need to post-process these prints, take supports off, that sort of thing. But it allows you to be 3D printing continuously and have parts continue coming off of the uh, parts coming off the belt. Yeah, I and mean, the one thing I was kind of interested in was the, the fact that it's a 45 degree angle mm -hmm. that takes care of overhangs already for the most part, like, you know, the, right. you have the 45 degree angle that you can usually get away with with PLA or PLA type plastics. And then uh, I saw the, they had a, a time lapse. They do have a really nice YouTube if you want to go check it out. I don't remember what it was, but I'll put it somewhere in the links below. Right. And they had a large polygon chair, uh, which doesn't look very comfortable to sit in actually, but whatever, right. it's a big print. And it did just, in the middle it's empty, I think. So it's, you know, like the, the back, of the legs part, right. it's completely you know vertical when you have it sitting properly. So it's printing on its back, but then just no supports at all because right. it has that 45 degree angle that uh, I guess it just works out. Yeah, it's and very it's, odd. It's it's interesting to watch run. Um, now there are some strange sort of supports that it needs to have at the beginning of a print, mm. um, if yep. you, especially if you've got something that I, I don't even know how to describe the. Overhead. So just the one that they had was a an airplane. And okay. then the nose, you know, it's got like a light angle, and maybe like a 15 degree angle on it. And it just, it's pretty much with any support, like with, with FDM printing, you need to start somewhere. Right. And if you have, you know, this little nose sitting out there, it's not touching anything. Yeah, you're going to need to have support. Yeah. So it. it's just the same idea, just turned 45 degrees. Right. Or something like that. So a little, a little over my head, to be honest. Right. So <laughs> the black, my head so the black belt 3D printer is the one that had a, had a successful Kickstarter. Yes. Not a lot of backers. I think do you have the. Kickstarter yeah, I can. Uh, Fifty four backers. Uh, it's in, it's in euro, thousand, one hundred dollars or euro and ninety, ninety. Oh boy, you think thousand hundred I, I, euro? Yeah, no, I, I was thinking cents and stuff. I think, it's it's uh, it's, it's pretty their, much a hundred two thousand what was euros. Their goal? their goal was like twenty five or fifty thousand mm, euro. Mm, that's a good question. Uh, 
I'm not sure. I think it was something like that. Maybe, they got funded in 12 000. minutes. Yeah, so the the printer itself is a, it's a pretty expensive printer. I think it's going to retail for somewhere between eight and nine thousand. So it's not an inexpensive uh, an inexpensive printer to go out and just get. You're not going to be a hobbyist probably that's going to go out buy this eight nine thousand dollar printer and still have all the material costs of, of printing everything. It's just not something you're going to do. It's not going to make sense. You yeah. only will do this. This is not the hobbyist printer. This. Yeah, if, if you've got a production, um, if you have a production purpose for this. Um, we're seeing other companies that are out there that are trying to automate the 3D printing production process, um, doing it in different forms. For example, you have Voodoo Manufacturing that has, uh, has a five-axis robot arm that actually will change out the build plate automatically and put a new build plate in and then start another print. So that's one way to automate it. This printer belt is another form of automation. I believe uh, Stratasys has another type of um, printing bot farm or something like that. Uh, 3D Systems has their has their form of this automation where it's, it's, it's basically a moving platform and it goes underneath multiple print jets and then it's, it's kind of a I don't know, kind of a racetrack. Yeah, design. there was someone in the comments that posted, they made a, a print, it was like a whole printer setup, and mm -hmm. I think it would do like auto, it was really weird how they changed the filament out. I can't really describe it too well, but it's called okay. Open Open Creators. I can share that link as well, auto build plate changer. And it was really interesting, and that's already been, that's done already, but it, it'll kind of look like an Ultimaker. Yeah. Ultimaker. So I mean, a lot of these, when you look at the automation, they're they're pretty complicated on the hardware side. These belt-based printers are, relatively speaking, pretty simple. Yeah. I mean, it's really it's light a belt. tweaking in it's, slicer settings. Right. I mean, yeah, the big to thing, make it work. Yeah, I exactly. think the big I thing is think slicer using and, and even Simplify. firmware. And even firmware could probably take care of a lot of that yeah. stuff. But yeah, I, I think I they know. I think they're using Simplify. Okay. And then we could maybe segue from there, and then talk about stats afterward, comparing uh, the printer belt. They are working with Polar 3D, yep. and Polar 3D has made a software that is specifically for it. And they, uh, they have another printer, just the Polar 3D printer. It's a very strange setup. Uh, that works in a regular setup, too. I don't really understand. Oh, actually, no, they have their own software, what am I saying? Uh, but I think that Simplify does have uh, settings for a Polar 3D printer. I, I don't know. I mean, I think it, I mean, it we, could, we were fixing one, it so we had to figure it out. Because a lot of the ways that the uh, the motion of the 3D printer is determined is by the firmware. The mm -hmm. G-code tells it, okay, move to this point on a grid. And then the firmware determines, okay, how do I need to move the motors to get the extruder to get to that point on yeah. the grid? And so with the Polar 3D, it's kind of a weird rotating it moves, build platform. Uh, I forget the X and Y didn't quite make sense as far as, I think they were like kind of opposite of what you'd expect. So yeah. the one that moves on a track forward and back, which would usually be Y, I think that was X. Okay. And then the tilting motion back and forth, I mean, it's just in, in place. That's, yeah. that, that, that I believe was the Y, which I couldn't quite I have, I have a lot of trouble wrapping my brain around these things. Yeah, because I, I forget the benefit that they said that had. And, or or maybe, maybe there was no benefit. It's, maybe e it was it's just efficient as far as how much room it takes up. Okay. It's a round build plate, and it's spinning. So you end up getting, you can get a pretty good build maybe, size yeah, out of that. Yeah, maybe that was it. Yeah, because you so, can I mean, have if a you larger double, build plate. If you then. double the build plate, you're not doubling the footprint or you right. know, cubing. I don't know exactly how it would work, but it's uh, pretty efficient as far as okay. space that it takes up. And uh, we had some pr problems initially, and then I think our tech, Marcus, reached out to Polar 3D, and they just said, hey, change the stepper voltage, or the voltage on the stepper motor, and then something else, and it it was, it was looked just like another print, you know? Yeah. You couldn't, I mean, you could see a little, the artifacting was a little weird. Right. Compared to like where a zipper might be on uh, another print, but yeah, it really comparable as far as what you get. Because the, I don't think there's any videos of the printer belt running yet, unless there's something from a Maker Faire that's out there that yeah. I'm not aware of. But I know the video that Brooke Drum had on, on the printer bot page, um, it was just, it had the hardware. So it looked like, you know, a really solid version one or version two of the hardware. And then he said they were going to be shipping that printer off to have all the software stuff done. I'm guessing a lot of the firmware stuff done as well. So that's one that I just don't think there's, um, yeah, I don't think there's much video of it running because I'm sure they want to wait until it's running pretty reliably before they they go ahead. And, I thought and it was already. It I thought it was already going out. Actually, it might. I mean, I don't know. It might. I be. think it is because on their website it says lead time holding pattern broken water jet. So I guess they have a laser or like water water cutter. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, please check back often. Out of stock. 
Okay. So uh, Do they have a price point on that? Yes. So that it's that's why I was thinking like it might be it's a production piece already because okay. it has a number. Well, again, like so, you said, this isn't exactly a hot yeah, take anymore. Yeah, not a hot point. take. Um, you <laughs> think we would have done a little more research in the last two months or whatever it was. So it was June 1st through July 1st that Black Belt was on Kickstarter. Um, their price point, somewhere between like five and 8,000, just depending on parts and maybe more after it hits the shelves. Uh, I think it's going to be shipping pretty soon, actually. Are we Printer, talking Black Belt? Or? Black Belt. I'm just, yeah, okay. I'm just okay, doing so the comparison now. My estimate was off. Um, okay. Well, whatever. I'm just looking at their their numbers. Sure. So somewhere between like five and eight grand. Um, well, it's in pounds and uh, euro as well. It's, I, we're it, pretty We're, we're going to just pretend that it's one to one. I know it's not. Yeah. I apologize. It changes day to day. It won't be accurate when I, when this posts anyway. The printer belt is 1500 and the big, the big difference I see is that the build size is pretty, it's pretty sized it's small, down. It's small, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's six, on the printer belt, it's six inches by six inches by, by unlimited Z. Yeah, in, infinite. Infinite, you know, you know what that and means. Then the, and then the black belt It's is, 13 by 13 by... Oh, yeah, so I mean... It's, I mean, it was in millimeters, too. Difference. I think it was 340 millimeters. I mean, it, I have it. But that sounds about right, because I, I might think 12... As well. I think 12... Yeah. Uh, 12 inches is is about 300 millimeters. Yeah, so it's, it's 13 by 13. So it, it is, you know, double in each axis. Okay. Yeah, as far as like just the looks, overall looks, I, I think the black belt looks a little bit more clean. Uh, the belt looks a little bit more like it'll last longer. Yeah, and I don't know what material they're using for the belt. Cause I don't know like, either. It almost, it almost looks like a weave of like some Like a Kevlar sort. kind yeah. of thing. Kevlar. The carpet. printer belt looks more just like... Uh, like a uh, capped on tape kind of thing, cellophane hmm. sort of look. I know it's not cellophane, but just yeah, describing no, I, it for yeah, the audio I know listeners. What you, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's got a tape look to it. So I think the printer oh. belt would definitely be more in hobby, hobby land. Well, as far as the price and, yeah. and the size. Yep. So it just depends on what you're trying to do with it. But I mean, they have a lot of numbers here about the the hot ends and stuff. I'm guessing that with both of them, you're going to be able to switch out a lot of this stuff. And then there's a little bit of talk about dual extrusion. Um, just people asking questions in the black belt. Man. Yeah, it's it's all just going to be complicated. So dual extrusion stuff seems like it would be a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, at that point, I think you're much better off going with something, you know, throwing in like a mosaic, uh, mm, like, sure. the, like the Palette Plus yep. by Mosaic Manufacturing, where that takes in multiple strands of filament and then cuts it and combines the strands, and then it goes in gets fed through a single extruder yeah. printer. If you we don't still, follow them. I, it'd be great to get one of those in to test, but. That'd be nice. <laughs> well, from what I've heard about the about that, there's, it's good, but you run into issues on the design side. Oh, sure, okay. Still, you, you know, know, just like with any sort of You know what kind of slicer that ends up using? I don't. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know enough about it. So, I mean, really, I, I feel, it says it can work with any 3D printer that uses standard G-code and I think X3G files as well, and maybe another type of um, file format. But I know those two for sure work. Okay, I mean that covers a lot of you know people yeah. that people that model. They can get you one of those. Right. Yeah. I think X3G is this, just the texture. I'm not exactly sure. You no, X3G is a maker. X3, oh, I was thinking. Uh, I was thinking uh, something else. I don't know what I was thinking. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, just looking at the numbers, I'm sure there are a lot of other stats that we could talk about. But really, people care about just you know, the print dimensions. Right. Uh, so six by six by inf infinity on printer belt, 13 by 13 by infinity on the black belt. And yeah, it's really odd because uh, someone in the comments of the black belt uh, page, I have the name here. Oh, I thought I did. Okay, just one sec. I just want to make sure I credit him properly. Sure. Well, that's Because he had a couple different examples of prior art, because I think they were yeah, talking that's about what they were talking, they were talking about, about um, uh, patenting this, or if Black Belt's going to patent this technology. And MakerBot had something not belt based, but having um, having some sort of automated belt or automated build plate cleaning uh, way back when they were doing the uh, the cupcake. I think, I think it was so 2010. Maybe it was, maybe so I was reading a little bit about it. Yeah, or maybe it wasn't the the cupcake. There was the cupcake, I believe. Or was the cupcake? I think so. So they, they, it was open sourced in 2010, and then I think they quickly closed sourced it and patented it. But I don't think there's anyone that's doing anything with that type of 3D printing 
automation because now Stratus is, because they own MakerBot, I believe, owns that patent. And so no one's, everyone's just leaving it alone. And I think the belt system works better anyway. So people are just going to gravitate toward that. Yeah. So the commenter was William Steele or Bill Steele. He's the Polar 3D guy. Oh, sure. And he said, they can't really patent it. There are a few pieces of prior art. He shares out some links. Uh, one of them was actually one that he did, I believe. Because that was the Hackaday article, wasn't it? Uh, let's see. Okay, so there's one called the Lum 3D Printer. This was on Instructables, posted by Andreas Bastian. And I'm guessing I said that right. <laughs> uh, I was thinking An Andrea, but no, it's uh, just on Andreas. Uh, uh, let's see. So, I mean, this was a, a belt printer, that the DIY kind of thing. I'm not sure what printer he's basing it off of, but there's a lot of like laser cut and printed parts okay. that he put together. I'm not going to go crazy on this one because I'm just going to share the link if you want to look at it. The other one was the Hackaday. That was the one that featured, this was earlier 2017. This one talks a little bit about the MakerBot patent. Um, but this was something from Bill Steele, again, a Polar 3D. And I think it showed up at, what event was this? Is a Maker Fair, wasn't it? Uh, it was Midwest just... Rep Rap. Oh, gotcha. And we wanted to go to that, but we didn't go. Look, and so what they're, uh, what he did in the Hackaday article is he took a MakerBot Replicator 2, modified it with a belt, although the belt was at the 45 degree angle instead of having the gantry at a yeah. 45 degree angle, and had this continuous belt based printer. And that's, that. I mean, that was the basics of yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's the same idea, just rotated they, 45 rather, degrees. Rather than tilting the, the gantry system, he tilted the bed. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the top comment, the first comment, I suppose, glorious outside the box thinking, even better that it doesn't have a name. <laughs> and then the second comment replying to that just said, more outside the box, tilt the whole device by 45 degrees so the belt will be level and heavy objects won't peel uh, off under their own weight. So just, yeah, it's typical it's internet, like typical internet banter, just like, hey, great idea. Here's how it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, just immediate <laughs> smashing. Yeah. Uh, so my thinking is, because Polar 3D and PrinterBot ended up teaming up. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that Bill must have had this idea, and then he's like seeing what PrinterBot was doing. Yeah. Maybe they combined, kind of met in the middle. It's, I don't really know. It's probably one of those things where three or four different people all had the same idea at about the same time, and it just things worked out the way they worked out. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's going to be like a, a patent war or race or. I hope not. Yeah, I mean, I think. Even uh, I mean, for something like that, I don't know who had the idea first. I don't really care. That's not my right. problem. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, William Steele is a backer of Black Belt. Like he's in there, and he's commenting. So it's cool. He's the one that shared that link. He also was commenting just even a week or not a week or so ago. It was uh, I guess yeah earlier August. Uh, he was saying. Oh, it was June 23rd. Whatever. He was just saying, hey, we have a slicing software, cloud-based. You Let's talk. So hmm. who knows? Maybe there will be uh, one printer in the end. I don't think so, but... Uh, Could be interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's very odd. There's not a public comment, but I'm sure they've talked. Right. So it'll be interesting to see. And again, with Kickstarter, you always have the... Uh, yeah, yeah. There's always problems with keeping up or just, you know, stalking. It depends on, I don't know anything about Stephen Sherman, the uh, the CEO of Black Belt, CEO of Black Belt 3D. Yeah, and I mean, once that once that printer starts shipping, I think we'll know, I mean, we'll clearly we'll yeah. know a lot more because people will have the printer being in use. I mean, there, there, there are videos online, I'm pretty sure that they're mostly from Black Belt. I think so. So you, I saw some of the prints that were from the Kickstarter, like the big guitar body. Mm -hmm. We did have one here too, different, yeah. different style different of printing. We printed thing. in the Z up, we have yeah. on our Raze 3D. Uh, N2 Plus. So we'll, we'll have more information about that when more comes out, but... Yeah. I guess any other stuff on belted so, 3D printers? I mean, or? I guess we talked about the Polar 3D already. Let's see. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, I guess there was one more, like, previous uh, art, as they were calling it. There's a powder printer, kind of a CJP oh, yes. style. It's called the it is, it's VXC800. Yeah, so this is by a company called VoxelJet. Yeah. So VoxelJet prints um, basically casting patterns. So these are these are pieces that will be infiltrated with metal and it's used in metal casting. So it's basically 3D printing in sand is, is yeah what it is. And so it's got a continuous thing. So it's it's basically laying down and spraying sand at a 45 degree angle. Yeah, it's really just CJP with sand instead of yep. gypsum powder or whatever yep. whatever it ends up being. So yeah, if, I'm going to have these links in the bottom. Otherwise, actually, I'll probably just link to William's comment. 
Uh, and William had done a printer way back in the past. Um, it was called the Ultrabot 3D. I was just doing a little digging on, on Kickstarter, so. Yeah. So many different He's been around. printer names. I mean, think it, of how many different names bot, have been used. I mean, yeah. you end up, by this point in time, you're limited on what you can choose for a printer name because everything that has printer and bot and fabricate and additive is, what I'm, do you do? I'm gonna trademark <laughs> squ square bot. Like, what do you do? It's probably, it's probably, Trademark. Already. Someone took it. Someone's just square. On square it. bot is a cool name. Square bot. Square bot. Box it's bot. It's terrible. If you're square bot, I'm sorry, but it's a terrible yeah, name. It's, it's well, it's nondescript anyway. So any anything else? I think I think we can probably. Talk yeah, about yeah. This, this the was table. also speaking of the the uh, Race 3D N2 Plus. This is a full build height print. Yes. Yeah, so this is the. I'm not quite sure how well you can see it. Okay, so on that camera you can see it pretty well. And then on this the other the camera. This is the top of it. Yeah, so this thing is <laughs> about 23 and a half inches tall. I didn't quite want to max out the, the Z axis height on the, or the Z height on the Race 3D N2 Plus. But yeah, this is the, uh, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Printed all in, in one print. I think it took about 15 hours to print. Um, what I, kind of settings did we I have? I believe this was 0.3 millimeter layer height. Yeah, that looks about 0.3 it, millimeters. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, because I think I just wanted to print it quickly. Yeah, this um, is not a high definition print. It's pretty much. Well, no, it's 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 pretty much just a large extrusion shapes. piece. Yeah, and this was printed in 3D Fuel APLA black. Uh, there, what the infill did you black. do? I think just 10% okay, infill. That makes enough sense. Maybe it was 15%. But yeah, I mean, for something like this, you don't need a whole lot of infill. But yeah, I don't know. It's a, I mean, it's a it's a big print to be able to print this all yeah. continuously. It doesn't seem like a huge print because of you know it just gets that. Yeah, I mean, you end up getting a little bit of wiggle just with any tall print. And I mean, if we would have had a sacrificial tower printing next to this, you'd have more definition on the very top, you know, and the antenna. Yeah. But because it's PLA and it's a PLA based material, it doesn't. When you're doing this, and it only takes 15 seconds per layer, and I force it to take 15 mm. seconds per layer. It doesn't always cool down all the way. It doesn't harden all the way. Before yeah, especially when it's the next all layer. that plastic next to each other. If it's yeah. like if it's like a perimeter, like a like at the bottom, it's not going to be as bad mm -hmm. because you'll have that much time. Well, I guess it's right. going to be more than 15 seconds, but right. you know, all that plastic is right next to each other in a little tight circle, right? So it doesn't cool off as much. This then, yeah. What what you got there, that's, Eric? Uh, this is a little a small me, a small Eric, and we actually have a 12 inch tall one or something like that. Uh, we printed it on a Hatchbox Alpha. Delta printer. See, now we need to print this on the Rays 3D. Oh so you man, can, you can really take like that we need. Out, I'm already. Take that out and, I already uh, have enough narcissism to deal with. <laughs> um, it'd be funny. I, I would. I'd be okay with it. But on, yeah, it's weird. Um, yeah, we did this. Uh, we have an interview that still hasn't come out. I have a lot of videos from our Minneapolis, Minneapolis, um, our Minneapolis trip that I still haven't posted. It's just been a time issue. We have yeah. a lot of new parts in. I've been taking care of that. So now I'm getting more on the video stuff, and uh, that interview will come out hopefully in the next few weeks. We have Brian Gler as well from Power Props that I still haven't done. And then uh, some other stuff with some some uh, DLP, I think it was DLP printing. So this was from Me3D in the Mall of America. We're four hours away, so I mean, it's not that awful of a trip. Yeah. And typically they don't just give you the scan. I mean, we kind of had an agreement going, so it's not, it wasn't a typical situation, but typically what you would do, you go in there, you get body scanned, they print off a full color CJP print on uh, it was some 3D systems printer. And then if you are interested, you can buy the file for like 40 or $50. So typically you won't just get the file. It, you could probably work something out with them, it's not typical, but if you just wanted the file, they would probably let you just buy the file, but they're gonna charge you more just because right. they typically want, it's like $80 for a six inch figure. So they'd get at least the 80 and then, you know, it works out that way for them. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's an it's, interesting business model. They say that they're busy. Yeah, I mean, they, they I mean they're in the Mall busy. of America. That's not a cheap place to sit. No, so no, it is not. Yeah, very nice folks, and uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of the B-roll is uh, redacted, so um, we're, <laughs> it might be a bit of a rough edit. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, I did get the file. It has OBJ, uh, FBX, and something else for texture. I don't remember. So it's three files. Um, we're going to talk about this a little bit more in another episode, I think. But I'm not exactly sure. Uh, a little bit of just like house. Uh, what a house cleaning Keeping. housekeeping that's the word yeah. um this is technically the last episode of season two season two took uh, a year and i think we got 20 episodes in which is mm. that's like a regular tv season 
We gotta kind of. I forget. I don't know. <laughs> usually TB seasons between 21 and 23. I don't have no idea. No. But uh, yeah, I think uh, we're gonna switch things up a little bit. I'm gonna have to take charge of the podcast. John and Jake are just busy. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna try to focus more on video stuff if I can. And then uh, you haven't seen him yet, but. We talked about the hang printer before. The next episode, the first episode of season season three, it's going to take some uh, work on working on to get uh, worked out. But he's going to be my host, I think, and at least the first episode we're going to talk about his hang printer, yeah, which see, I went and shot at his apartment last week. But you're going to get to see some different personnel on the on the podcast, so yeah. some more variety from just Jake and I. That's not to say Jake and I won't still do the occasional podcast, mm-hmm. but it'll be we'll do more of a special topic. Yeah. So get used to seeing me. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'll see you next week. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, so again, on uh, on behalf of Eric Faldi and myself, John Schneider, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, the typical like, subscribe, share, and if uh, you have any ideas for what you'd like to see in future shows, please let us know. Um, as Eric said, we're always tweaking the format, looking to make things better. Yeah, so. and we do have at least one one Skype interview coming up soon. It's a kind of an exciting one, so yeah. look forward to that. All right. Thanks again. As long as that one's recording. Yep, I see my big dumb head on it. Good. We're all set. As long as it's in focus, we're all good. <laughs> I think so. I I'm checked, I always forget to check that one. This time it's uh, looked good.